If we have a marathon prayer, like the one we are doing now, part of what we do as ministers is to watch the move of God. And then to know at what point uh, God begins to release us into the liberties that he has ordained. So the prayer that we have been doing, there is a shift now yeah, in the spirit. Because of the shift that I said, how many of you also you have sensed even the dreams you've been having, it has transited this, yeah, so there's a shift now. And because of that, I'm instructed to uh, do something tonight, which is a departure from uh, the progression that we have sustained in the series. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus the Christ, we ask that your presence might envelop this place and that your glory might be made manifest to remove every barricade in the destiny of everyone here present and everyone under the sound of our voice. Uh, grant unto us that open door and let your name be glorified in the name of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Now, pay attention. Pay attention. We are going to do something very significant today, so I want to crave your indulgence to pay attention. I will do a little teaching to expose one or two things, then I'll invite us to pray. The prayer is going to be very powerful, and God will take advantage of that prayer to crush uh, everything that Satan has placed in the way. All right. Um, I want to prepare you for a wonderful 2022. Turn your Bible quickly. If we are going to prepare for 2022, the first thing we need to knock out, as the Lord whispered, is what he called negative inheritance negative inheritance come with me to Genesis chapter 49 negative inheritance in Genesis chapter 49 verse number okay let me give you context give you perspective um, and Jacob called his sons and said, Gather yourself together, and I will tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. This man was under, fully under the authority that God bequeathed to him as one of the pivotal patriots. And the anointing that he was operating in was an authority, was manifested in an authority to establish Israel within the constituents of, of her destiny. And so this man was galvanized by God to um, establish the tribes of Israel consistent with their, her possibilities in ordination. Now, my interest is the man called Judah, the man called uh, Jesus will come here today, eh? you know? The Lord Jesus, the Lord Jesus. He, will, he has shown me a sign just now that uh, he's interested in what uh, I'm doing. All right, let's go. Let's go to verse 10. So, their father is functioning in patriarchal grace, patriarchal grace. And the grace he's operating in gives him the authority to... Um, to empower Israel to flourish within the constituents of the ordination of the tribes. Now, my emphasis is about Judah. This was what um, Jacob said when he came under the influence of this anointing about Judah. He said, the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor the lawgiver from between his feet until 
Shiloh come. Unto him shall the gathering of the people be. This is the ordination of Judah. If you read all the ordinations of the various tribes, you will find out that um, rulership was bequeathed to Judah as part of the parameters of the destiny of Judah. Judah is supposed to be the one that has the ordination to produce the kings. And that's why, because of these utterances that Jacob had issued, that's why there's no contest. There's no, it's okay, your, your, your tribal man was king this time, let our own tribal man, no. It, it's, it's by ordination. And this man was able to pick the ordination of the tribe of Judah and it was established that it will, it will be from the loins of Judah that the kings will emerge. Now, this is God's position about Judah. However, once upon a time, in the life of this man called Judah, unfortunately for him, he was sexually loose and he committed incest. He slept with his son's wife. Even though he has the ordination to be the one to produce the kings, this scepter that is supposed to be the crown of the tribe of Judah, because of that incest, what we call negative inheritance. I'll explain that. Because of the incest, uh, there was something that has been included into the lineage of Judah because of the lack of discipline of their ancestor. They were supposed to bear the scepter, but from the time that that man committed incest, the scepter was suspended from Judah for 10 generations. That's what we call negative inheritance. Uh, you are not the one that committed the incest, but you are just a victim of something that is trapped in the bloodline. Uh, um, um, we also call this the sins of the bloodline. The reason why I don't want to rush into teaching this subject is so that I can take time to show you that it is something that we need to deal with, the sins of the bloodline. The way God designed us, he designed us in the natural consistent with genealogies and family trees. And uh, the context of your family tree is very, very consistent with uh, the apparatus that is found therein that has the capacity to either move the hand of God or move the hand of Satan. Now, even though Judah had a very enviable destiny among his brothers, he he, I don't know what got him into that mess. But what he did to his genealogy, unknown to him, by that one act of sexual exploration, was that he threw the possibilities of his descendants <laughs> into doubt. And for 10 generations, the scepter that is the crown of that lineage was suspended. We call it bloodline iniquity. I will take some time to build my case on this matter. Are you with me? Now, if you count from the, this time and you count in the family tree, you will see that Israel began to demand for a king in the ninth generation. And according to the stipulation of the justice system of heaven, the way God felt that that iniquity will be purged will require 10 generations wherein that scepter is suspended but in the ninth generation israel began to request for a king and uh, god obliged them but you see the tribe of benjamin from when saul came did not have the stature to bear the grace of kingship that means that by ordination there is nothing about kingship that was spoken about benjamin and benjamin was going to fail in that role because they had no grace from God to fill that role. Uh, Saul, even though he was the giant of Israel, 
he was a failed project on arrival because what he was trying to do was not captured in his ordination. Have you, have you taken inventory of our political system and you find a man that he, he goes and bows to Satan, he goes and kisses dragons, he goes and makes obeisance to cobras, then he goes to Einek, he visits this Emir, and then figures are manipulated, and eventually he's sworn in. And then he's panting. For the next one year, he's panting from all the trips that he has made. And then when he now wakes up to face governance, he is fighting for the next four years. The, the issue is that the burden, there's no grace to handle the burden of responsibility. It is not part of his ordination. Benjamin was brought into this political equation. Meanwhile, there was no substance in terms of ordination that could carry the burden of rulership. They attempted to release the scepter, but there was nothing in Benjamin that could hold it down. And the best that Benjamin did was to bring utter confusion. And it was obvious that it was not the mind of God for Saul to be the king of Israel. One generation later, when the bloodline issues created by Judah was adequately purged from the perspective of God's justice system, then God began to search for a king. Because the platform from whence he could choose was already open. Hallelujah. So you got that first point. Let me show you another scripture quickly so that you understand that when we, t when we talk about, uh, you see, Satan is legalistic in nature. You are not with me. Satan. You know Satan? Call Satan a murderer. Call him a thief. Call him wicked. Don't call him a fool because Satan is not. Jesus never called Satan a fool. You are going to be foolish to call Satan a fool. I was in this town. We were in a meeting. And a pastor was given a charge to invite another senior minister to come preach. And he said, you know Satan is a fool. Everybody say, yeah. Satan is a fool. Yeah. Everybody. Satan is a fool. Amen. Were you there? Okay. The next few years of that pastor's life was designed to prove that he was, he was wrong. <laughs> Let me. You know, it's, it's close range. It happened in this town. So let me not say more than that. You, before someone says, were you? No. The, the man in question is not so important. I'm just saying, he went, he took off on the wrong foot and Satan cleared his doubt in three years. Whenever we talk about your family, what we mean and the reason why we are interested in your family is because of one singular provision in scripture. One provision. Can we, can we take a look at a typical uh, genealogy scale? Uh, we'll find that in the book of, uh, I think the most express commitment to capturing genealogy is in the book of Matthew. Can we, can we run? Take inventory of um, it's a long read, but I would like to I would like to adopt the summary in the book of Matthew chapter one verse seventeen. This is the scope. This is the scale. This is um, how natural realities are captured. And we cannot, by any means, uh, overlook the issue of inheritance. See, this is the summary, all right? Verse 17. It says, so all the generations from Abraham to David were 14 generations. I would want us to, uh, because I hope you know David is from Judah. I want us to go back and do a little study from, it's not too difficult to do, 
from Abraham to David. Is there any fracture in the bloodline? What you are going to study is to see, check for fractures. Because if the devil wants to attack you, what he will do is that he will check for the fault lines that are embedded in your bloodline. There are several fault lines that by the ordinations of God, which is captured in the justice system of heaven, it will take 10 years, 10 generations to purge. That is, if you don't pray about it at all, naturally, it doesn't have a, an eternal shelf life. It, it expires. Are you there? Number two, if you have, like for the case of Judah, which is um, the subject matter of our study, uh, this evening you will see that it took, it required, what, 10 generations to blot out. Nobody prayed about it. Every bloodline iniquity has a natural shelf life of potency. But number two, if you have an insight into how the court of heaven operates, and you notice there is such an issue of bloodline iniquity that is captured in your genealogy, you can take that issue to court and launch an appeal on the premise of the new possibilities, new foundations that have been laid for us in the new covenant. And you can press charges in that court and receive a verdict that will overrule the speakings of that bloodline iniquity. For you not to do this is carelessness. It means you are not ready for destiny. Satan is going to travel. You know, I told you about um, First Peter chapter 5, verse 8. He said, be sober. He said, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, walketh about seeking whom he might devour. And I told you that that motion of the devil, when he walks about, is not necessarily linear motion as you, you would think. You say, walking about, you think it's from here to Boko. But I can show you evidences of scripture where work it about meant traveling 700 years into the past to look for evidence because he's a lawyer. He's an attorney. He's going to find a fault line in your genealogy. One of the things he can exploit a bloodline issue. I know you will not believe me until we start praying. You know, the, the beauty of this is that there are when the power of God is present, they, they can be practical. The devil will travel. You are beginning to knock his head. You are beginning to create damage to the kingdom of darkness. How can we deal with this man? Then he sent demonic researchers. The ones that labored with your great-grandfather when he sold slaves. He will take inventory of all the curses that they cursed your, your, your great-grandfather when he, he would tie people. Hallelujah. And a regime, when he has gathered that, he goes to, uh, to the court of heaven to seek authorization to begin to afflict your people. He travels to heaven. So I have some issues. Who, are you not a God of righteousness again? This man, this is what happened. And you know, the, this, the impact of this thing can travel across generations. There are several things that have transgenerational potential. And um, every form of sexual or unauthorized sexual, I need a very good word. I know you know what I'm saying, but I need the word that, a, a better word. <laughs> every unauthorized sexual experience, because I didn't get my word, that's why I'm I'm falling at experience. You did it in private, but the effect will not be private. When you see, when I was on campus, my roommates said I was impotent. The accusation, Chief Donatus, the accusation they brought was a case of impotence. Because well, they used to bring ladies to the room and force pastor out at any time. 
and I never brought any lady to the room. So they say, this is a practical case of impotence. You see, I had studied my Bible a little, and I knew the things that I will lose to Satan if I start. Everyone that is okay has the ability to commit fornication. But you see, even though you hid in a room to do it, the implication will not, it, it won't rest in that room. It will travel beyond that room. And Satan is, is, is an attorney, and he needs uh, some evidences that he can file up against you in the court of heaven in order for him to secure permission to bring injury to your life and to truncate your possibility. It, it was God that said, the scepter shall not depart from Judah. That's a royal decree. There is nothing Judah will do that will make the scepter go to another tribe. So if Judah does something, then the scepter can be suspended. But the scepter, what? Will not depart from Judah. They moved God. They made a request. It wasn't time, but they made a request for a king and tried to make the scepter depart from Judah. God allowed them in a permissive manner to try out the scepter. If any other tribe has the capacity to bear it, Saul was a woeful failure. No grace to carry the weight of an ordination that was not designed for him initially. Inheritance is a critical factor. You find scriptures in the book of uh, Proverbs chapter 13, verse number 22, which is a very, um, one of the simple scriptures uh, that I like so much to bring uh, on this subject. It's a good man lived an inheritance to his children's children. It means that if you are good, in your goodness, you are unknowingly stockpiling inheritance of goodness for your children's children. My dad was a public servant in Benway State Civil Service. Some of the very old retirees might recognize my dad. I was even told that in um, the State Secretariat that my dad's name is written among the functionaries that served in a certain capacity. I've not been there. I'll try to check it out. Now, so he served here. And I remember those days, almost all of our neighbors had a video, but we did not have. So we now must have courage and went to my dad and said, hey, Oga, is there anything wrong if we have some entertainment at home? And he said that the Monday the salary they pay him if it's, meanwhile, we were 22 in the house then. Yes, yes. In, in my, my mother's side and my dad's side, my dad was the greatest man that ever rules. So everyone related, oh my God. We, do you understand that? Have you seen a house of 22 people? He said, in this context now, his obligation is to ensure that everyone goes to school and everyone has something to eat. So he doesn't have what is left to pay for entertainment. One of the reasons why I know the spirit that is in this land cannot fight me successfully is because my dad served this state righteously. He served this state to the highest levels of service that there are, and he served righteously. I remember a prayer my mother prayed for me. Because the only land that the state government gave to my dad that I inherited from my mom, she said, okay, since you are the one that is on ground, take this C of O. Your dad had this piece of land. You might want to develop it. You might want to build your stuff there. Uh, before I got there, the land was sold. I will not, the details with help. So when I went back to my mom, I said, hey, see what happened, she said. Then she opened up 
and said, your father served Benue State government and he didn't steal their money. So go and give the C of O to the person that sold that land to give the person he sold it to. Come back. So I obeyed and came back. He said, now I want to bless you because your father did not steal money from Benue State. All the land you need to do what God has called you to do, you will get it in Benue State. So it was prayer I inherited at the end of the day. I know you will laugh. But that prayer, okay, some of you know how much that prayer has produced, and he has not finished producing. A good man does what? Leave it an inheritance for his children too. So don't forget the word, the power word in that scripture is inheritance. So what I wanted to draw your attention about is that uh, there is a possibility of inheritance in the spirit and you can't do away with it. And because of that, Satan will look for occasions through which you can have negative inheritance that can forestall the manifestation of your ordination, even though it is valid from God. Exactly. Now, because of the critical nature of these matters, I want to give room. As I teach one subject, I'll give room for any question. Because I don't want you to I don't want to entertain any lack of understanding be, <laughs> before we start praying. Is anybody confused about this matter? Is there any confusion? If you have any confusion about the issue of negative inheritance, you may wish to, I'll give two opportunities, if there are, before I proceed to the next matter. The objective of tonight's meeting is to release the hand of God against any such barricade that has been built around your ordination, your destiny. And we want to use 2022 as a specimen because we'll be back in the month of December to take inventory of how your life is going. Hallelujah. Anyone that doesn't understand this matter that I've raised? Anyone? Now, let me give you a brief story. Brief story. There's this pastor. He's an American pastor. He realized something. That when he goes or gets angry, his anger is astronomical. Not, it's not normal anger. And are you, are you with me? And you notice that his threshold for anger is slimmer anytime he's fasting. So much so that when he says he wants to fast, his children will come and plead with him that he should not fast because there is a likelihood of an outburst. And if that outburst takes place. It will take the hand of Jesus to calm the situation down. In fact, the, 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 the angel of that household was the mom that had so much enlargement in grace to be able to contain that level of escalation. And in one of those prayers, he went to God and said, Lord, even my children that are, they are not yet teenagers. They know that there's a problem with my life. So I am coming to, and he is a righteous man in terms of fidelity, in terms of, you know, but that single, that matter, he, he, whenever he enters into anger, he's no longer in control. It's just like when we're under the influence of the anointing. There are things I can do under the anointing that I will be very honest to tell you that I cannot do it if the anointing is not upon my life. I also want you to know that there are things that you can do under anger. Hmm? You will be so power empowered <laughs> that you cannot do when you are under your normal senses. It, it, it seems there is an influence that has an access to manipulate things in that window of anger and outburst. And the man went to the presence of God and said, Oh my, I know I cannot continue like this. Help me. And then God began to reveal to him that that issue is a court case. I'll explain what I mean by that. It's a court case. I remember I bought a house. 
And there were tenants in the house. And I sent my lawyer to them to tell them that the house has a new ownership. And it is the interest of the owner, it is the will of the owner that they vacate the premises so that the owner can put it to the use that suits him. I think that's, that's polite. And then the tenants now said, we are not going to. I hope you know at that point it's a court case. You know, we're trying to discuss like gentlemen, whether you, you are angry about the thing, the house has already been bought. And the house will be put to the use of the man that bought. And meanwhile, I was not in a hurry to park into it. And I had all the time for court cases. And in fact, I even like court cases. <laughs> so <laughs> we mobilized and went to court. And when the matter got to court, the judge, who is a very smart guy, wanting the case to end quickly, read out the prayer, and then asked the guys that were illegally occupying the property why he would not give judgment now against them. Ah! So they were still vocal. I said, ah, we are married people. How can you just say would you live like that? They, they, they judge now educated them. That that's not how they talk in court. In court, we wouldn't understand law. So why should he not? And we, the, the lawyers were very intelligent. The, 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 the prayer they made, it exceeded my own demands. They added some fines and all kinds of stuff. So that even if you are coming out, you are in debt. <laughs> I came to tell you that some issues are court cases. We need to know how to approach God in the court of heaven to secure a verdict from him that is consistent with the foundation of the covenant that we are established upon, even the new covenant. You want me to show you a few scriptures about how the court operates? I've, I've, I've been doing that for many years. But maybe for the purpose of the people that are just coming, you are not aware that there's a judicial system in the heavens. And uh, that some of the issues, that family issues and genealogy issues that is bedeviling you are actually judicial issues that you should take to the court of heaven. So when God told this preacher that it was a court case, he now went to the court of heaven. That God was a judge. I hope you have seen it in the scripture. That God is a king. God is a judge. And God is a lawgiver. I, I've forgotten... Um, there were some documents like that. A Jew wrote those documents. Most of what we call our legal systems today were adapted from the scriptures. Right? And it, it, it was a Jew that did that first. You know, we have the legislative, we have the executive, we have the judiciary. And that's what is in that scripture. The Lord is our king, the Lord is our judge, and the Lord is our lawgiver. So the scripture is the platform, the platform for all types of justice systems whatsoever, which, is, which makes the court of heaven the highest court that is superior to your supreme court. Now, if we have time, which I know we don't, I would have taken you to one of the scriptures and showed you a scenario that embodies the court of heaven. And that example will be Genesis chapter four from verse number eight to 12. Let me confirm that my references are right before I leave you. Yeah, that's right. Genesis chapter four, verse eight to 12. It's one of the scenarios of the just a court session in heaven, a court session in heaven. If I take you to the book of Psalms 82, Psalms 82 is another scripture that gives us a perspective of how the court of heaven operates. If you um, happen to be a student of the prophets and you, 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 you focus on a book like Zephaniah, you'll find a lot of Zachariah, you find a lot of court sessions that are built into uh, those prophetic books and you'll be able to see substantially how that... Um, uh, the spirit realm is legalistic and the court of heaven 
is the highest court that exists in the universe. And bloodline issues are court issues. It was a verdict that came from that court that suspended the scepter that was in the house of Judah by ordination. The 10-year parameter of suspension was a product of justice that came from that court. Are you still with me? Now, let me give you this idea. The moment that guy committed that incest, the court sat. When that law broke, are you with me? When trespass was committed, the court sat, and the judgment that came from that court was that it would be 10 years of suspension. We were not there in the court, but when we saw the implementation of the verdict, we saw it, 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 it was consistent across 10 years. So we knew that that was a position of the court of heaven. This man now began to repent on behalf of his family. Began, because what iniquity, are you, are you with me? I've taught you before the difference between sin, iniquity, trespass, transgression. Now, iniquity means self-will. Self-will as opposed to God's will. Iniquity is rebellion. That's what it is. The guy that is worshipping idols is not as if he's a novice. He doesn't know there's God. If you enter into the realm of the spirit and begin to travel, even higher demons will teach you that there is one that is called the righteous one. Ah, you don't believe me? Come with me. Let me show you. Let me show you. Um, are you there in Colossians 1? Okay, Colossians 1, beginning from verse 15. Okay, 14 will make it meaningful. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. By him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. You see, he's a zenith of creation. So if you say you don't want to be born again, you want, only want to be a creature in the height of creation, that's where he is. If you say you are born again, you are a member of the body of Christ, he's the head of the body. Are you with me? Everything ties up to him. In fact, the arrangement, the arrangement, that thing I'm reading for you in the book of uh, Colossians chapter 1, it's, it's the revelation of one of the articles of the eternal purpose. Uh, you see, this article of the eternal purpose is that in the zenith of all things, Christ has been domiciled as the entity in the zenith of all things. Now, let me show you that. Um, mm, mm. For by him were all things that are created in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. For he is above all things, and by him all things consist. He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the, the, the firstborn from the dead. Why? That in all things he might have the prayer ministry. So God, are you there? God in himself and preordained before time that in the civilization he wants to build, which will be very, very reflective of the context of his heart desire, Christ must be in the zenith of that civilization. So if I take you to the book of Ephesians, I'll show you what God is doing in time. What God is doing in time is bringing everything under the government of this Christ. All the loose ends. So that um, the goal that God has in making him preeminent to become evident in every aspect of creation. That our government will be reflective of Christ. That my life will be so, so, so aligned with his government that it is his will that finds expression through my vessel. It is his will that finds expression through Nigeria. As long as it is not his will, he's still working to ensure that everything is a reflection of his will as it is captured in Christ. 
So if you travel in darkness high enough, you will find out that there's one called Christ. You will know that the master you are reporting to is not the ultimate. And the master will tell you tales about his sovereign. His sovereign. Because the Bible reveals that even demons believe and they tremble. Is that clear? All right, so. We need to go to the court of heaven. The guy began to repent on behalf of his ancestors. Because there, there was an iniquity. There was something of self-will that they did that gave Satan advantage in their bloodline. And it is that advantage that Satan had is exploiting that is manifesting in that unreasonable anger. And if you are going to cut it off, you need to go to court where judgment, justice, and equity is issued so that you can defeat that position that makes Satan so empowered in your lineage. You see, if you fail to do such things, it means you are not ready for destiny. Do you know that this prayer this pastor prayed was just for 12, 12 minutes and a verdict came? It means God had been waiting for him to show up. As he began to re repent, say, okay, it's all right. It's all right. The effect of that position has changed. Go. You and your family prosper. He now realized that his son, that has been in college for a very long time, also had that anger. And two times the school called him to report the escapades of the young man. So he called the young man, told him the prayer he prayed, and how God had forgiven their lineage and the implication of that. And then the young man now asked him, when did you pray that prayer? The father said, I prayed it about two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. And the young man could recall that two weeks ago, he stopped becoming angry with the world. His own anger doesn't have meaning. He is angry with the whole world. <laughs> so he doesn't need anything to make him angry. He's already angry. <laughs> and if you don't deal with these issues of iniquity, as he travels to the next generation, it's more potent, more elaborate, more deepened. I've seen pastors be, that whose pastors, whose parents were pastors and they were adulterers. And they came to the pulpit. You will see that the anointing is original. But there's, there's, there is another package that comes with it. And the package becomes more robust as it travels across generations. If you are a wise man and you have seen the weakness of that generation, you will go to the court of heaven and secure judgment. That there's a provision to alter this on the strength of the new foundation upon which we dwell. The new foundation that has been, you know, established through the work of Jesus on the cross. It places us in a place of advantage where we can receive justice. Such justice that is consistent with God's good pleasure. Hallelujah. That's, that pastor's son was delivered. Because of those moments that were spent in the court of heaven. Oh my, we have taken too much time. Meanwhile, I have another issue to raise. Okay, we'll raise the issue tomorrow. Okay? I want to show you tomorrow evidences to prove that someone has contracted a spirit to fight you. There are some symptoms that will suggest that you are in the heart of a certain warfare that comes from the altar of a, a specialist in wizardry, in witchcraft. I'll show you the symptoms. I wanted to show you a few, of, but there's no time to take that. So we'll just we'll do the issue of negative inheritance. Oh, somebody in the congregation is um, is challenging me. Say, one of the scripture that says, "If any man be in Christ, 
It's a new creation. All things have passed away and behold all things have become new. Hallelujah. So the first question I will ask you is Jesus paid for sickness. Do you see for sick? Or it's automatic? The um, implication of the payment have been rolled out in an automatic fashion in your life. Satan doesn't play according to the rules. He will trespass many times. Sometimes he comes into your space to check if you are knowledgeable of the fact that indeed redemption has been meted out. The reason why you can even be delivered at all is because of what Jesus did. The, the hope of deliverance is not in view at all if not for what Jesus did. And you know it is possible for you to receive verdict from a court and that verdict was never never enforced. You can receive judgment but the judgment is never enforced and your situation will remain the same. So why we do this kind of stuff that we are about to do now is so that we can bring enforcement of several things and we are trusting God that through our interfacing with the court of heaven we are going to receive verdicts from God and we are going to use it to enforce his will in your life through the agency of the anointing. I need to also um, reveal to you that um, the ministry of Jesus was fourfold. He preached, he taught, he healed, and he cast out devils. Don't forget that. He preached, he taught, he healed, and he did what? He cast out devils. If I had time, I would have spoken a little about my experience in riverine areas like McCordy, like River State, Cross River State, Riverine. <laughs> uh, well, we, we don't have time. But we're going to pray. We're going into the court of heaven. And you're standing as a representative of your family. And we're going to bring repentance. We are going to bring repentance. And when we have done that, I will begin to pray. Then you will begin to see Satan literally releasing people. Here, today. Hasami <laughs> Kakoba. You know one thing about the word of God? It is true. It is true. It is true. Negative inheritances. negative inheritances. Many years ago, God had told me, he said, um, the day you will start losing out is when you practice unauthorized sex. There are several scenes that are linked to some judgments in the court of heaven. Many times God will come and warn you, no. And you would think it's only you is warning because the other people are, are doing it. And then, ah, you don't understand the shape, the shape of, of justice. He's trying to <laughs> protect you. I cannot afford immorality. When I'm about to leave you people, I will come one day here and say, it's five years for me to go. If there's anybody that has evidence, that they saw my nakedness. You, you have three years to speak. Because we are taking that gospel to the end of the earth in our time. That's what we live for. And oh my. As it stands now, my vision is 10 million souls before I'm 50. 10 million. You look for them anywhere they are. We need to remove every obstruction that will stand against the greatness that God has programmed in your destiny. Can you, can you rise on your feet? We'll just do, oh, you see the oil is already dropping. Samaya Kora Siko Mebrisko Falama Sai Toko Brelo Mosila 
Abrata Baburu Kusila Etamunda. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. So imagine that we are standing before God now. Forget about your neighbor. We are going to make some confessions. Can you say, Lord Jesus, I approach you today concerning my lineage, concerning my bloodline. Father, have mercy. Every platform of iniquity, every platform of self-will, against your will works of rebellion that were done against you that empowers the enemy to manipulate the lives of the members of my genealogy I bring repentance have mercy have mercy have mercy in the name of Jesus We come by the blood. I can't hear you. We come by the blood. We come by the blood. We come by the blood. Lord have mercy. In the name of Jesus. Let the ground that Satan has exploited over the generations, let that ground be taken away by the blood of Jesus. Sicknesses that were judgments that resulted from such transactions that took place, Lord, we overcome it by the blood of Jesus. Unnatural poverty that were products of such transactions. We overcome it by the blood of Jesus. Strange, uncontrollable sexual passions that are results of such transactions against us we overcome it in the name of Jesus expose us to the spirit of death that is a result of rebellion worship of idols transactions with evil spirits Lord have mercy Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Tonight, let the yoke break in the name of Jesus. Don't worry. You will see reaction here today. We are in the court. We are in the court. Father, let it please you to release, to break the chains in the name of Jesus. Now, ushers, just get set. Lord, let it please you now. Those ones held. Evil spirits have been dispatched. Evil spirits they were supposed to serve. But they have rejected them because of salvation. And those spirits are still disturbing. Those spirits are still troubling. Lord, let those chains break. 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 Break, break in the name of Jesus. So you will begin to see Satan will begin to release his captives now. Oh, I see a lady. I see a lady, and there's something moving in your, your stomach. You're feeling a movement. It's becoming intense. It's becoming intense. So, Satan, I command you, take off your hands in the name of Jesus. Ushers, as you find them, bring them. Now, you are beginning to see the reactions taking place. Oh, yalo kope la yinse. Brekute suke kubakutela. 
Meskuvila hiko batane avai toko peskuta manteli. These are these are issues, all right? From the court, they are being released. They are being released. They are being released from the court. Now, where are the camera people? I want you to show them. Show them so that the people watching will know that we are not joking. My oh blood, you destroyed principality. Jesus. Jesus. And by your name, you establish authority. Jesus. Jesus, the righteous. By your blood, God. Confirming Mama Seti Alabu. Jesus, 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 and by your name, you establish authority, Jesus. Listen to me. Listen to me. You know, yesterday I got a mail. I got a mail from a white woman in Finland. Described her spiritual situation, the, all kinds of things and all of that. I said, all right, send us your number. And she sent the number, put her on a Facebook video. And uh, she didn't know who respond. And I, I called my wife. I said, sit down here. This is practical. And I pointed the woman. I told her, do you experience this? She said, yes. You experience this? You see this? You see that? Okay. It means you have been dedicated to an altar. You are supposed to serve a spirit. And that's why you have these symptoms. Well, how do you know? I said, <laughs> uh, there are a lot of those things here. All right. Okay, put your hand on your umbilical cord. That one, I got it from the Holy Ghost. All, okay. Don't use it as a formula. Then I began to pray for her, and then she began to manifest on the video. Prayed for her, and then released God's blessings and left. I said, you tell me what happens to you by tomorrow. She had a dream and saw all the stuff. This, she told me that in Finland, let me leave you. The pastors couldn't handle it. Oh, they say, oh, when a, when, when a pastor comes to attempt handling it, maybe the demons will attack. You know what? They will attack you if you are not sold out. I'm not living for anything again. There's no demon anywhere, even the one at Bermuda Triangle. No demon anymore. This morning she sent a testimony. I don't know how long she's been in that condition. Now, what I'm talking about is not based on time. Are you with me? Now, there's somebody in this auditorium, you were supposed to serve a spirit. Listen, listen to me. You're supposed to serve an evil spirit, a water spirit, a spirit from the water. Because of that inheritance, you've been exposed spiritually. But you see, God has given me wisdom as to how your freedom, okay. That's one. I'm just talking about it. It's a, that's one. That's not, that's not all. 
Jesus. So you will think that in, in, in the world of the whites, there's this kind of thing don't exist. You are wrong. The atmosphere of Makoda is better than many cities in Europe. And it's God's good will for us to export apostolic Christianity back to Europe. There are many trips we are going to make as a team to Europe to evangelize again. So the Lord has given me wisdom on how we can tackle the case. You see, she's innocent. This lady, she's innocent. Wonderful young lady. But it's not about whether you are wonderful. It's about the legalities. Don't worry, she'll be free tonight. She'll be free tonight. Jesus. Now, you see, this my camera people, you are going to be sacked after this service. The people I want to know that, that this thing is real are in London. You are showing people's lipstick. In fact, we need to conduct deliverance for... <laughs> the emphasis is lipstick. They zoom it. They zoom. <laughs> Kaima Shiko. Now, you see, are you with me? You are not with me. You are not with me. Yeah. You see, it, this thing is legal. It's not as if it's not as if Satan is strong. Ooh, you see, there is even someone here in a more terrible case. I'm seeing the spirit. I'm seeing the spirit. It's a reptile. It's in the shape of of a reptile. But that person will be delivered. Now, this is what Jesus told me just now. He said, he ask them to say my name seven times. That's Jesus. <laughs> can we can we try? So if I say in the name of Jesus, okay, how we do? How is it normally done? Okay, one, then you say. Two, three, after seven, keep quiet. Anyone that is here, that there's a heritage, a spiritual heritage that is manipulating their destiny, you will see they will be plucked out. And then we can cast out the spirits and, 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 and liberate the people. So let's try. Number one. Jesus! Now listen, I'm seeing a grave. I'm seeing a grave that is opening. A grave. A grave. A grave. It means that uh, one of us here, you come from a family of necromancers. People that consult with the dead. And a lot of damage has been done to your destiny because of that spiritual act that has taken root in your family. And even though you have given your life to Christ, it is an offense. The spirits trouble you. They, they fight you. But tonight, God is bringing liberty. Number two. Jesus. Now, ushers, just take note. As we, as we mention Jesus, the Lord will be arresting the people. You just ensure you are bringing them. Because we are going to conduct the deliverance right here. Right here. You know what I'm seeing? I'm seeing ancient coins. I'm seeing ancient coins used for transaction those days. Someone here is a victim of spiritual trading. A victim of transactions. Victim of trade. Trade. Demons are insisting that part of your possibilities belong to them. Tonight is your night. Number three. Jesus! Yesterday night, someone in this congregation death came to you yesterday night in this congregation. Because I'm, I'm seeing that. Where are you? Death. You struggled your, your way out yesterday night. Where are you? You struggled your way out yesterday night. 
You struggled your way out. Yes, let me find out what happened to you. You struggled your way out yesterday night. I can see that. If, that, if that's your case, just stand this way. How, how, how many have we done now? Three. Oh my. Oh my. Number four. Yeah. There are three of our ministers. Uh, we will find out who they are. God is giving you special deliverance anointing. Those of you sitting here, there are three among you that will be known as. So, can you? Where is Pastor Tony? Let's extract it. Don't worry, the, the demons will leave you. By your blood, there is no principality. Jesus, Jesus. Okay, okay, let's, yeah. Abike, what are you doing there? Yes, yes, sir. You said that people that death came. Um, yeah, death, death. I saw it. Yes. You, yesterday, what happened to you? I saw in a dream my father and my mother that were dead long ago uh, was sandwiched in between them. There was like a rail and fire was coming from both sides. The fire was destroying everything. But I, I, I was there with the dead people. My father, my mother. And when it got to my, when the fire got close to where I was standing, the fire um, got extinguished. But the dead people were still there. They were still there. Okay. Yeah. yeah, Pastor Mike. Please make it brief. Make it brief. Don't accept anybody to join again, okay? If the person has not joined now, it's not true. My, it's, uh, it, there's no way that will visit you. That you, you, you say, okay, let's hear the, the first one first. <laughs> it's not that. <laughs> it's not, it's an accident. It's, it's an Okada accident. You, oh my. Okay, yes. In a revelation, uh, uh, I, I saw three, three men, so they, they, they came to my house, so uh, shot a gun, and my senior brother came out, and they, they grabbed him, so, but my senior brother did not allow them to grab him, he wanted to return and enter inside, they now point gun on him, and carried him on their shoulder and left, and now, and now shot Three of us, we, we, we fell. Two was dead. But me, I refuse to die. But there, there's no strength. But there's no strength. Uh, and, and the only thing was, was don't worry, don't, don't. Worry. I've heard you. What happened to you yesterday night? I was working on on a uh, graveyard. So I was with somebody. I don't know the person. Then I now tell the person. I see we are, we, we are working on the grave. So I passed like more than uh, like four. Then we jumped to the other side to see graves. So we crossed to the other side. And uh, okay. I saw the person back. And the person, uh, I saw the person at the back. At the and, back. The person, and the person now left. Yeah, go on. In the night, when I sleep, I saw a, my, my younger sister, the one that died before. Then she came down. She was telling me, they want to go with me. So I said, <laughs> You are not going. You are not going with anybody. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. So that today, I am not telling her to speak, no. but I do speak like this. Don't worry. Don't worry. The Lord will do it. Okay. Now jump, jump. Go to. Yes. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yesterday, um, around two o'clock, I was. My heart was beating fast, fast, and I felt like as if I want to die, mm. and. I break my nose. I was I was choking, choking up. Then I yeah, I break the cutter. Some cutters came out of me, and this one I discovered that it was full of blood. I was surprised. I've never had that experience. And last night in the dream, I was on it's a okay. journey going. Don't worry, you are not going anywhere. Father, by the hand of death. Don't worry, it death will come out. To come up. All right, so I've touched them. One of you, your case is an emergency. 
And since I've already touched you, God will show me whose case is an emergency. Father, let the anointing multiply on that one whose case is an emergency. Let the anointing multiply. Don't worry to multiply. Let it come strong. Let it come stronger. 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 Show me the one whose case is an emergency. Let your hand become stronger. 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 So the emergency here is on this lady. So, your own case, eh, mommy? Listen to me. Someone is trying to attack you. Hmm? He's trying to release debt. So tell me what I will do to the person. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let that which was released as an affliction on the life of mommy go back to the sender. Go back to the sender. Amen. Go back to the sender. Amen. Every root of necromancy is overturned. Amen. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You are shielded. You are protected. In Jesus' mighty name. Now, let me show you something about the spirit of death. It's very defiant. Okay, you can't see from there. Normally, the instruction I have... Okay, Lord help me. Oh, okay. Give me my handkerchief. That's my handkerchief. Bring it. By your blood, destroy... Okay, put it on her head. The spirit will leave. Yeah. Jesus. What number? Where did we stop? Is if we have said four, four times. Okay, number five. Jesus. Sorry, all of you can go back. All of you can go back. Let's do that number five again. I was distracted. Number five. I'm seeing chains. I'm seeing chains. Father, that one that is carrying chains, that is chained, chained on the legs, chained on the waist, chained on the hands. I ask, Lord, that you help me find that one in the congregation. Help me locate that one. 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 The one that is chained. 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 Yes, his hand is coming stronger. It's coming stronger. Help me find that one. Let the anointing increase. Let the anointing increase. Let it increase. Let it increase. Aha. Uh -huh. So we can help this lady. Do you know what? The chain is on her waist. Usher. The chain is on her waist. Lay hands on her waist. Okay, pray, pray, pray. Yeah. 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 Now, I need another female usher. Female usher. We can remove this crown. This one has a crown. She has a crown. I, I hope you know all of these things are inherited. This is a, a wonderful lady, all right? But this is an inheritance. We have displaced it from the court of heaven. Now, oh my God. Psychosali kabarata mansala babore. Mara babore osemino korseti. In the name of Jesus. I command the chains to break. 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 Break from the waist. Break from the waist. Can you put your hand on our waist here? And then speak in tongues. Let her go. In the name of Jesus. Let her go. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Left. Ah, put your hand on the waist, sister. All right. 
Pray now. Pray. Hallelujah. Now, one thing I'd like you to notice is that we are not shouting because it's not it's not a shout issue, it's judicial. Uh huh. Okay, okay, okay. Come. What shall come? Come. So shake me. And release some power on you. Father, in the name of Jesus, let's let your power be released in Jesus' mighty name. So go and lay your hands on her back and command the link to break. Keep praying in tongues. Uh huh. Yes. See, the spirit has gone. Stop. Usher. You have finished our job. Uh, number, number six. Oh, I'm seeing somebody walking in the dark room. And if I'm not mistaken, you saw that two days ago, you had a dream. Two days, two nights ago, not yesterday, day before yesterday, you were walking in the dark room without light. Two nights ago. Where are you? Two nights ago, you were walking in a dark room. There was no light. Two nights ago. Is it true? You were walking in a dark room. There was no light. Two nights ago. Okay. Come this way. Oh, in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name. Now listen, listen, listen. See, one angel has been released. Can you speak in tongues? Just speak in tongues. Break every chain. Oh! Oh! Salomari Bahala Parana. Someone listening online, the hand of God is upon you. The spirit of God is upon you is turning things around. You will not walk in darkness. Raka Santa Baboria Seminari Compresco Fata Mandeli Jelly Bocoria Badara Tamina To break every chain Break every chain You are released Pray. Put your hand on the back Pray in tongues There is power In the name Of Jesus there is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. There is power. Break every chain. 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 All right. We had to do all of that prayer too so that I can become more sensitive to the angel that the Lord has sent. Now it is clear. Um, I, there, are, there are a few people that God wants to bless before we shout in the name of Jesus the seven times. Father, in the name of Jesus, there are seven of them. Seven of them. 
The angel will pass through the congregation with a garment that is soaked in the presence of God. Some of you will feel his touch. And it's coming stronger. It's passing. It's already passing. It's passing through the congregation. Passing through the aisle. Passing through the aisle. Passing through the eye. Passing through the eye. Some of you have been anointed for more capacity. God wants to increase your capacity. He wants to increase your capacity. Oh, thank you, Lord. I see a mokendo moro koskita mila ibre. Resku falante si kobora malaita. Lando seca meria mosa kila bonde kila barata kila barata suame skalima arama masia cambre subalaitos ebrema rakabela monte his competa kulia mama yes he's anointing you because of the journey ahead he's preparing you for something something that is about to take place during the course of this year is preparing you for something and the anointing of the spirit of god is resting strong around your life god is at work the spirit of god is at work the hand of god is at work antes also beraka buka malatalia lenso seli makadebore Saminantos, Ebros, Kelide, Maka Labroca, Mantelli, Akabaraita Soma. Thank you, Lord. The Lord prepares you for the journey of destiny. The things that were close to you before will now be open. And He will cause your face to shine. In the name of Jesus Christ. Ah. Now I see the healing angels. I see the healing angels now. Oh my God. Oh. I see the chains falling. 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 Falling, falling. I see the chains falling. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Break every chain. Break every chain. Now, the healing angels are at work and the Lord wants to heal. Other healings will take place, but specifically eyes, 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 eyes. So you can take your healing in the next um, five minutes. If you came with sickness in your body, there's a challenge with your sight, there's a problem with your hearing, Believe God right now because the hand of God will come upon you. And there are a few set of people watching from Europe. And God is set to dispatch healing into your life. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Let us pray. I want to pray for healing quickly. Oh, someone with an excruciating pain, I command that pain, go, go, in the name of Jesus. Amen. 
I break the yoke of infirmity. I break the yoke of sickness. I destroy afflictions. In the name of Jesus. Ah, I'm seeing someone, you, your, your body is heavy. Your body is heavy. There's, this, there's a demon that is hanging on your body that is responsible for that heaviness. And I command that spirit, depart in the name of Jesus Christ. Where's that lady with an everlasting headache? Everlasting headache. Where are you? The lady with the everlasting headache. Come, quickly. To break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Climb up, climb up. Every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Father, in the name of Jesus, I destroy this headache. Headache, go. 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 In the name of Jesus, go. In the name of Jesus, go. I command you, go. In Jesus' mighty name. Can verify yours now when you when you revive. Break every chain. I command pains, pains on the back, pains on the waist, be dissolved in the name of Jesus Christ. I command blinding spirits be gone from the eyes in Jesus' name. Deafening spirits be gone from the ears in Jesus' name. Pains on the legs, go in the name of Jesus. Go in the name of Jesus. Go in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. That spirit cannot remain. It can't remain. It can't remain. Let her go. Let her go. In Jesus' mighty name. Can we do the seventh? Sixth? Is it sixth? Seven. So, number seven. Jesus. Now, listen. I'm seeing people. Okay, you. You can stand now. You are, you are conscious. Shake your head like this. Shake very well. No, no, no. You are doing guy. Shake like this. Then help me look for the headache. If you find it, let me know. I'll pray again. Stand up. Shake, shake, shake. Don't be. Ah. Then look for the headache. Do the same thing. Then look for the headache. Can you still find it? Okay. <laughs> Can you find it? If you can find it, let me know. Okay? You can go back. Look. Look for the headache. Raise her up. It's a, it's a spirit. Don't worry. Those ones, by the time they recover. Now, somebody has been healed from the back. You came here with uh, a condition on the back, a pain, a strange pain on the side of your back. And I can see that the Lord has healed you. So you are the one I'm looking for. And uh, I would like you to check your body. I'm looking for the person that uh, the Lord has touched your eye condition your eye condition. Okay? Before we pray a final prayer, I want to release something. Uh, please help me check for 
an eye condition. Those of you on the console. Eye. Because the Lord showed me a condition of the eye. Eye condition. Yeah? Where, where is Tony? You normally forget. Should I be calling you? Yes, investigate. Look for my eye condition. Mm -hmm. To break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. To break every chain. Yes, you are free. You can go. You. You are free. You are free. Break every chain. Now, place your hand on our forehead again. Father, in the name of Jesus, I set her free. I set her liberty. Let strength come upon her. In Jesus' name. Yes, you are free. You. You are free. You are free. You are free. I saw Salamo Kamalaito. Yes? Uh, we don't know what's happening here. The eye conditions. Wait. They are all eye conditions. You have a spectacle? Yeah, I have a uh, medicated one, but this is not the one. Okay. It's broken. So, so what, if I put... Uh, what happened? What happened to you? Uh, I operated on it about five years ago. And uh, I, I cannot read it, but I can see you. Okay, you can, can see, see me. Her. Okay. Uh, so, uh, we don't have time, okay? So, give me three cases that God touched the eyes because he showed me eyes specifically. No. Oh, these are eye conditions, not healed conditions. Breast cancer condition. Okay. So she will go through that process for a while. Oh, the burnings of the Lord. The fire of the Lord. The fire. The fire of the Lord. I rebuke the demon of cancer. Go! Okay, allow her rest for a while. Okay, all of you are eye conditions. See, you people want to waste my time now. This is not... Okay. I don't have much time to waste. Where are the people with the eye? All of you. All right, so be calm. All right. I will pray for you. You demon of blindness, go! Go! Demon of blindness, I break your yoke in the name of Jesus. Demon of blindness, be gone. Be gone in the name of Jesus. 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 Let your hold over these lives break. Let your hold break. Let your hold break. Let your hold break. Don't worry, you will see. Command those demons be born in the name of Jesus. Don't worry, you will see. You will see why the Lord spoke about the eye. The 
There's a reason why I spoke about the eye. There's a reason why I spoke. Okay, see, he has healed someone's eye already. Lady, bring her. Can you check for an eye condition there? Because this anointing that is at work now is for eyes. It's for eyes. You can be healed. Eye pain, eye blindness, all kinds of stuff. You can be healed. Now, where's my Pastor Tony? Check this woman on the ground. Okay, allow her to wake up. And, and then you check her for the eye. All right, so from Georgia, we have... I had an unusual situation now. I can't really explain, but I believe Christ has done... No, we, we don't want you to believe. Tell us what the situation is. My eyes are healed and our perfect vision by faith. We don't want it by faith. So we can't accept these two testimonies. It's not by faith. Oh, his whole house shook in, in, the, in Georgia. I know you don't believe it. But you know I have no way to, to influence this thing. Eh? He says house. It shook. I know you don't believe. So how, what will I do now to make you believe? I'm still waiting for my eye miracle. There's somebody among you that God will heal on the eye. So I'm waiting before I do the, the last thing. The house in Georgia shook. Have you heard of the day of Pentecost? Um, after, after Pentecost in Acts chapter 4, when they prayed, the place where they were staying, the place shook. In Georgia. So yeah. there's a miracle here. There's a miracle already, okay. This woman, she came here without glasses. She sees very, very blurry. But right now, she she's able to see my wife very clearly from there now you see as i see you now the anointing the healing anointing is still working <laughs> she is not perfect yet i see it like i don't know how to explain to you but it's tangible you can actually see it so the miracle is not complete yet yes where are the people on the council or what you see my i have three minutes to go three minutes to go you will Hallelujah. 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 You know, normally when we pray for people in the congregation and they get here, people question you. See? That's why they are here. And you know I can't influence anything. <laughs> May the Lord show you his power. In the name of Jesus. All right, we have another one. Excruciating pain just left me. This is Emmanuel Udo. Back pain just left upon calling the name of Jesus. Scovia. Scovia. So we have a miracle. We have miracles happening here. So miracles are happening. This yep. lady came here with so much pressure on her eyes and um, sandy kind of effect. Sandy feeling on the eyes. eyes but cup. It's gone. Pressure. Now, you see, that thing I'm saying, that thing is the healing anointing is still working. I still see it on her. It has not finished this work. Uh, 
That's not finished. That's not finished yet. You, you need to give it another. Now, there's someone in the congregation that is healed on the back. If I see you, then I will stop talking. Yeah. Yeah. What, what happened? They said my spinal cord has. said my spinal cord was bent so. The people yesterday confirmed they said I had scoliosis. I know, I know that. It's not straight. It's not so straight. I couldn't, came back, couldn't sit. So you couldn't sit there. I had to go and lie down upstairs. Oh my God. Now, I was expecting us to give Jesus a big hand, not the preacher. Now, meanwhile, now, we don't have time. I want to pray for you. That's what I'm preparing to pray for you. That is what I'm talking about. So, yes, the miracles are going on. Uh, we have miracles, but my intention is to pray for you. Can you stretch your hand, your right hand in my direction? This year, you will see what it means for a man to be helped by God. You will see. <laughs> you will see. You know, when you just said amen, I, that, I saw that uh, uh, there's someone, enemies are trying to set you up in the place of work. The judgment that will come will be so intense. Amen. So intense so intense. The people will never attempt that again. Amen. Father, I pray for your people and I ask, oh God, that your mercy, your mercy will rest upon everyone in the name of Jesus. Let your mercy rest upon everyone in the name of Jesus. Amen. I release grace upon everyone in the name of Jesus. Amen. And I decree that no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. Amen. In Jesus' name. So the road is clear now. Now, tomorrow evening we will do part two. There is still another tonic to ensure that Satan is disarmed. There's another. <laughs> There's another tonic that we are going to do tomorrow. Okay? So you can. Oh.